Hello everybody, welcome back to a special episode of Geek This Week. This one, right in the middle of the week, is going to be covering all of the announcements that have happened over the last couple days at E3, as promised. So, I am your host, Brogan. I am Max. And I'm Max. And we are just going to go ahead and get started. EA brought us in on June 9th, a Saturday, and they came with a couple announcements and some updates on some games they've been working on. EA opened with Battlefield 5 and with more gameplay footage. As always, there's the large weapons around the map, vehicles that can tear through buildings, and the war stories are coming back. However, this time there are no loot boxes, no premium pass, and a battle royale mode. As expected, we also got a bit more information on FIFA 19, starting with a Champions League, which is a tournament mode where players compete online for the ultimate team. There's also a free World Cup update coming to FIFA 18, and a free trial of FIFA 18 with the World Cup update is available for a limited time. FIFA 19 will be launching September 28th. EA also gave some updated information about EA Play with a new Origin Access Premier Mode, which is a monthly subscription that gives you access to hundreds of their already released titles, as well as upcoming titles as soon as they release. Of course, EA would give us a monthly subscription as an announcement at E3. EA also hinted at a new Star Wars game by Respawn Entertainment. It takes place during the dark time when the Jedi are hunted between the third and fourth movies. It's set to release holiday of 2019, and more info should come later this year. EA obviously also had to talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2, and they admitted they didn't quite get it right. No, really. They introduced a new squad system to team up with friends, and new Starfighter mode with full dogfights with hero ships, which, like, please, thank you. They're also going into the Clone Wars, featuring Geonosis, which they claim is the biggest map they've ever had in a Star Wars Battlefront. General Grievous and Obi-Wan are also coming back with Count Dooku and Anakin, so we got more heroes. EA also had a segment going over some of the upcoming indie titles that they've been working on. They first featured Unravel 2, a new adventure featuring the same character from the first Unravel game, as well as a new character made of blue yarn. It can be played both solo or co-op, where you work together to solve puzzles. In somewhat of a surprise announcement, they did also mention that the game was released as of that day, June 9th, last Saturday. So if you go online, you can actually play the game now. They also showcased a game called Sea of Solitude, one that is being developed by an independent studio based out of Berlin called Yo My Games. We haven't received a whole lot of information just yet about the game, but it is supposed to be releasing sometime early 2019. Madden 19 was announced with Madden 18 gameplay. A new Command and Conquer Rivals game was announced, however, it's on mobile. They used two competitive mobile players to show off the game. Free alpha builds are already available on Google Play for Androids. And finally, what we were actually waiting for, we got more information on Anthem. They promised that it's a cooperative ready game, but it is story focused. They wanted to emphasize that. It's a shared world, so players on the same server will see the same time of day and weather, but it can be played without the cooperative mode as well. It's a bit more difficult solo, but still doable. It's being designed so that they can add story for worlds to come. Going a bit more in depth, the Anthem of Creation is an unknowable force that is fighting against the remnants of what the gods created. They showed four different suits and went in depth on two of them. The Ranger suit is meant for up close combat and it's decent in a lot of different things. And then the Colossus suit is heavy with large weapons that do a ton of damage. There's a lot of customization in this game. You can change your colors, design, and even your geometry of the suits. There will be microtransactions to the dismay of the entire crowd, but no loot boxes. You will know what you are buying and there is no pay to win. They featured gameplay with a massive open world and with destructible environments, and they say that it's launching February 22nd of next year. So overall, the internet feels that EA did not do a very good job in their press conference, and what they announced was kind of lackluster as expected from EA, let's be honest here. Well, for one, the only games they really announced were games that they either release every year or games that we already have had plenty of information about in recent months. That being said, they also really heavily emphasized basically monetizing everything that they announced. It was, look at this new service we're offering where you can pay a monthly subscription, or hey, look, we're at giving you this awesome game with customization that you are going to have to pay for in some regard. Literally almost everything they announced had something to do with monetization. Almost like they didn't learn from their mistake. I'm not, I really- They, they totally didn't, like, being fully honest, 
I do no. have I do have high hopes for Anthem, but I but, have but low it, expectations but for it. It's made by EA. I don't expect it to do well at all at this point with with their track record now. Mm-hmm. Just remember, folks, no pre-ordering. Don't do it. The trap. In classic Microsoft fashion, at their conference, they gave us game after game after game, totaling upwards of 50, I think even 50 plus games. So we are going to go through these fairly quickly. To start off, they went big, showing off a clip of Halo Infinite featuring Master Chief. They announced Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is a sequel to the first Ori game, and it's coming 2019. Instead of Bloodborne 2, we got Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, a new game by From Software set in feudal Japan, putting you in the boots of something between a ninja and a samurai. They showcased some of their classic From Software boss fights and uh, a couple of their weird gadgets you'll get as well. We also got a quick teaser at Fallout 76, one that we would find out we would later get more information on. They did manage to get Todd Howard to come out on stage, basically to tell people that they were going to expect a full-length game with a map four times the size of that of Fallout 4. But there will be more on that later. Captain Spirit was announced, made by the same people who made Life is Strange. It follows a boy and his dad after the loss of their mom. It's free to download as of June 26th. We also got Crackdown 3, featuring Terry Crews singing, coming February 2019. As somewhat of a surprise, they actually also showcased Nier Automata Become as God's Edition, which featured all the DLC that is supposed to be coming out on Xbox One, June 26th. We also got to see a bit more of Metro Exodus coming February 2019. We got to see some more gameplay and trailers. Isn't it supposed to take place in Chernobyl? Is or it? around Chernobyl? It takes place in like Russia. I'm like I thought it was trying to get to the capital. We also, in a surprise twist, got the first look at Kingdom Hearts 3, which this is the first time Kingdom Hearts has ever been on Xbox. There are worlds themed after Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, Tangled, Monsters Inc., Toy Story, and apparently we're also going back to Olympus, so that's cool. Uh, It also got a release date coming January 29th, 2019. Finally. Finally we got a release date. We got something. And of course, Rare's Thea of Thieves got a nice little showcase as well, showing off some of the DLC that they plan on releasing in the future. We got trailers for both Cursed Sails, which is coming out July of this year, and Forsaken Shores, which is supposed to be coming September of this year. We don't really know what's going to be involved, but it looks cool either way. Forza Horizon 4 was announced. Taking place in the UK, it has dynamic seasons and a shared open world. Quick chat features let you easily chat with people in the world. Forza Horizon 4 will be coming October 2nd, 2018 and will be available on the Game Pass. We also got some new studios joining Microsoft. The Initiative is a brand new Microsoft studio. We also got Undead Labs, which made State of Decay. Playground Games, which are the developers for the Forza series. Ninja Theory, who made Hellblade. And Compulsion Games, who are making We Happy Few. It's pretty big news for Xbox and Microsoft, as they've been lagging behind a little bit with the uh, the exclusives and the, and the PS4. Hope to see some good stuff coming out. Those are some big names. Please. Speaking of We Happy Few, it finally got a release date after what seems like three solid years of teasing. It is officially coming out August 10th, 2018. PUBG was also announced in the Microsoft conference with a new map, Snow maybe, and a new war mode. We also got Tales of Vesperia, the definitive edition, which has characters seen for the first time in Western versions of the game, so we're excited they've made their pilgrimage. Which is quite surprising considering the age of the game. We also got a first look at The Division 2, a game that has not been even announced until this point. We do know that it takes place in a similar area, it is still in the District of Columbia, during the summer. We also got a release date of March 15th, 2019, so that is one to keep an eye out for. They did also have a little bit more information on that during Ubisoft's conference, so we will be talking about that more later. Microsoft also released some new information about the Games Pass. It now has Fast Start, which allows your games to boot up two times faster. With this pass, you'll be able to play some old games, some new games, and some games that just came out. You'll also be able to play some of these games in 4K. We got a new trailer for Shadow of the Tomb Raider coming September 14th, 2018, and we're just excited Lara Croft's back. We also got a look at a new skateboarding game, one that not a lot of people were expecting. The game is called Session, and it is supposed to be an Xbox exclusive. We still don't have a release date, however. Microsoft announced they're bringing Black Desert, the MMO, to the Xbox. Beta starts in this fall. We got a trailer for Devil May Cry 5 coming spring 2019, and uh, that's not Dante. Though there is a robotic arm, so... They also announced a new Cuphead DLC, conveniently titled the Delicious Last Course, DLC, Delicious Last 
horse. I literally am getting it right now. And it's supposed to be coming sometime in 2019. Tunic was announced as an exclusive indie title for the Microsoft Store. Go Link Fox. Fox Link. That's what it felt like. We also saw Jump Force, a brand new game featuring anime characters like Goku, Naruto, and Monkey D. Luffy teaming up against the forces of evil, namely Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. There was also a teaser at the end for some kind of Death Note content, so be sure to look out for that coming 2019. As sort of a personal favorite, they also showcased Dying Light 2. This one is supposed to take place in the United States, and seems to have a much more intuitive parkour system than it did in the first one. In this game, choices are supposed to completely affect the way the environment looks, how the game feels, and even events that take place, with a super deep ecosystem that has multiple factions that come and go depending on your decisions. In a what seemed out of left field announcement, Battletoads is coming 2019. In an announcement totally right field, Just Cause 4 is coming December 4th, 2018. We'll get more to come in Sony's E3. They also gave a few fans a bit of a heart attack when they first announced Gears Pop. Yes, featuring the Funko Pop figures. They then announced a new Gears title for the PC, only to announce that it was Gears Tactics, a real-time strategy game, not something everybody was looking forward to. And then they dropped the bomb and gave us Gears of War 5, where you get to play as Kate, a new character, for the first time. That one is supposed to be coming sometime in 2019, and I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more information as time goes on. And a wonderful surprise announcement at the very end of their press conference, they gave us a new trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. Looking very much forward to this game. This is the first trailer in like seven years. I'm so excited. I need this game in my life like now, and they didn't even like give us a good release date. Like. This, no, it's not fair. They never do, though. It's not fair. It's CD Projekt Red, <laughs> and they know that everyone's looking forward to this. And you know, The Witcher's had, like, no content for, like, three years now. Come on, something, please. But they're the gonna, aesthetic. They're going to pull one of these where when they finally give us a release date, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is coming out in, like, three weeks. And everyone's, then, and then everyone's going to be like, gonna oh, be like, I'm not ready. What if they just yes. dropped it like they did the other games this E3? Like, oh, by the way, it's out now. It is Project my Red, wallet, so you it is Project Red. Never they're, they're, guys. they're very punk to do that. I can't. My wallet's not ready. You, you know, get your in, pinky bank starting now. In general, I feel like Microsoft had a really good conference this year. They had a lot of good content as compared to recent years. Uh, going oh, yeah. into this, a lot of people were like, Sony is going to kick Microsoft's ass. And then Microsoft came and was like, hey, actually, hey, we've got- Hey, do you want 50 games? Here, have Bam. 50 Not games. Not only 50 games, but five new studios that they're going to be working with exclusively. Five as, good new studios, Yeah, they're, they're decent studios. They even had uh, titles like Sekiro. They were the first ones to show off Kingdom Hearts 3. They were the first ones to show off more 2. Fallout 76. It's like, true. Like they, got, they got Fallout 76 before Bethesda got the chance to do it. Even better than that, they got Todd Howard on the stage. <laughs> that right there I mean, they, they, is, a, yeah. is a one-up <laughs> on any anybody else just for getting oh, Todd hey, Howard Sonya, on the stage. I see you have Last of Us 2. We got Todd Howard. I mean, they're... We just win. We just got Todd. <laughs> we kidnapped him. <laughs> we are still going to have to see what becomes of this because there were still a lot of things that didn't show gameplay footage mm -hmm. that didn't have official release dates that being said as far as actual content and as far as the way that the that it was set up i think microsoft did a lot better than they have in recent years oh, yes. oh yeah most certainly oh yeah bethesda also gave us an e3 showcase on june 10th they started with rage 2 which was kind of expected it's a much more seamless open world with better characters than the first game and it'll be coming spring of 2019 as somewhat of a teaser, they got somebody to come out on stage and talk about Elder Scrolls Legends when I'm sure everybody was hoping for the elusive Elder Scrolls 6. He did announce that they would be completely reworking the visuals for the game, the card game I might add, and saying that it would be released later this year on Xbox, PS4, and Switch, stating as well that any progress somebody might have on mobile devices at the moment will carry over to those platforms. Thanks, Todd. Bethesda also dropped Elder Scrolls Online DLC information. Okay. They started off with showing us Wolf Hunter, featuring dungeons with an emphasis on werewolves, as well Merkmire, which takes players to the Black Marsh to explore the culture of the Argonians. That is one I am excited for. We also got information on Doom Eternal, the next Doom game, which got more enemies, more player weapons, more skills, and literally it's on Earth. So hell, hell on Earth, get it? Get it's it. hell on Earth. They then gave a little bit more information on Quake Champions. They did announce that they are planning on hosting competitions, as well as even professional tournaments for the game. 
Before the game launches, they plan on having a free-to-play version for about a week beforehand, and if you manage to get your hands on the game in that time frame, you get to continue playing for free even after the trial closes. We also got more information about Prey, specifically about a new DLC called Moon Crash. It is different enemies, hazards, and loot every time you play, similar to a uh, roguelike. And that is available to play and download now. Later this year, we'll be getting Typhon Hunter, a game mode which is similar to Gary's Mod's Prop Hunt. And there will also be VR compatibility to this game mode. We also got two Wolfenstein games, one VR, one not. The non-VR game is called Youngblood, and it's a new game featuring BJ's two twin daughters, and it will be somewhat of a co-op experience. The VR game is called Cyberpilot, and it'll let you hack Nazi robots and use them against foes, which sounds nice. We then got a look at the Skyrim Super Special Edition, which is available on Amazon Alexa and Samsung Smart Fridges. While some initially thought that this was just a joke... It's real. It's the best thing ever. It is actually real. You can download this. It's real? Yes. You can go download it right now. At I least, know what I'm going to prank my friend's Alexa with. Now. I know, right? At least on Amazon Alexa. I don't know about the Samsung Fridge but it is available for download on Amazon Alexa. It's this is legitimate. <laughs> it's amazing. Next, Todd announced Fallout 76 with gameplay and trailers and just more gameplay and ah, oh, it's so good. Basically what everyone was waiting for. This mm -hmm. is what we needed. The whole this conference. This is what we wanted. <laughs> exactly what we wanted. As we knew before, it takes place in West Virginia. However, we learned that this is the first vault to ever open. Vault Overseer sends people out of the vault on missions to six different areas around the map. There are tons of new enemies, many based on West Virginia folklore, such as cryptids or just ghosts in general. The world is supposedly void of all NPCs and only filled with vault players or other players playing online. In this world, you'll only be thrown in with about a dozen or so other players, so it's not like a hundred people are out there fighting you or working together with you, so a bit more uh, survivalist feel. You can team up with friends and take on quests and boss enemies or other players that may or may not attack you in the wild. You can build forts wherever you want on the map and you can move those forts freely to another location. As well, a very fun addition to this map are live nuclear missile sites that the player can explore the world and find codes to then be able to launch those anywhere else on the map. Hey, 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 you wanna mess with Jerry? You wanna mess with Jerry? Let's blow up his base. I thought we had a mad treaty with Jerry. No, <laughs> Jessica then, we'll mess with Jessica. That's fair. After the player has launched a nuclear missile into that area, the area is now irradiated, meaning there are new rare resources and new enemies to fight. In not quite the announcement we wanted for a new Elder Scrolls game, we got Elder Scrolls Blades, a mobile game in first person with console quality graphics, if your phone can handle that. Uh, it functions similar to the other Elder Scrolls games. You can tap the screen to move or use the sides of the screen like joysticks. It still has a progression system with skills and spells as to be expected. And uh, it allows you to play as a member of the Blade sent into exile. And it has a strange town building mode where you can upgrade and decorate much like the uh, homes in the Hearthfire DLC for Skyrim. And then when everyone thought it was over, at the 11th hour, with only a few minutes left in the conference, Todd Howard, the man himself, released teasers for both Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 back to back. It's happening, people. He's done it. And it was It's actually like And it was absolutely beautiful. He, so we're 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 it. getting hard sci-fi and hard fantasy. When when those trailers dropped back to back, I literally think I had a heart attack. I'd stopped breathing for a good 30 seconds after that happened. I, could, I couldn't... I, I wasn't able to watch it, but my phone, like, like my phone gives me news articles, and that's all it said. It's just Elder Scrolls 6 is real. That's it. That was the article that I got linked to. And I, even now, I mean, it's only a day or two after the conference has even happened, and... I mean, the, the guesses are flying as to where this is going to take place. Some people are saying it's still going to be in Somerset, like everyone assumed, or it's going to take place in High Rock is the really popular one now. Regardless, it is going to be a fantastic game. I just really hope we don't have to wait like another 10 years to get our hands on it. And my wallet is like... You just... have us, Todd. You have us now. Don't this up. <laughs> my wallet's just not ready. I'm just... No, guys. More than anything, though, piggy bank. I think something to look forward to... A piggy bank for an Xbox One? I can't. I can't. It's possible. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's more like a more like a shoebox. You know, like the 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 Star Wars helmet piggy banks. We'll get you one, but it's like Todd <laughs> Howard's head. <laughs> Please. It's like a chia pet. Please, can it come with like three hundred dollars in it? For now, though, I think. Uh, we should be looking forward to Fallout 76. I think that is a good one to look forward to. It's coming out this fall, so it's something to tie we us over. We have a beta coming soon. Like, it's actually true. out now. It is true. The beta I don't know about now. now, but we do have one coming out soon. I'm just really glad, I'll be honest. I am glad that they decided to make a completely separate game to test the whole multiplayer thing rather than try to incorporate multiplayer into one of their massive titles. I think this is a much better way to do it, even though people are complaining and, oh, it's an online it's an game. Online I don't want to do people, yeah. people. Look, it is better that they are testing out multiplayer with a game like Fallout 76 than trying to throw it into Elder Scrolls 6. It's just a bad idea. So, it's... Chill your grill. Safe than sorry. On June 11th, Square Enix opened us up for more games, more fun. We got another look at Shadows of the Tomb Raider. This time we got actual gameplay featuring new tools and new environment. We also got some information on Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood, which is a patch, a DLC, a addition to the game uh, with the new Under the Moonlight patch. It combines Final Fantasy and Monster Hunter worlds. We also got a first look at Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, which is supposed to be coming out September 4th of this year. It looked fairly similar to all the other Dragon Quest games in the series. They did also tease at the very end some kind of mobile game where Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and Dragon Age will be collaborating for something. We also got a trailer for a new game they're working on called Babylon's Fall. It's a PS4 exclusive. After a little more near Automata, we also got a bit of Octopath Traveler, which is coming to the Switch July 13th. And then we got yet another look at Just Cause 4, where we got a look at some of the new features in the game, including extreme weather like tornadoes, thunderstorms, sandstorms, and blizzards, as well as new vehicles that allow for all kinds of new destruction. And lastly, there were new enemy archetypes that have different abilities than we've ever seen before that are supposed to keep the player on their toes. In an interesting trailer reveal, we have a new game called The Quiet Man, featuring a man who fights crime but is deaf. More info coming in August. And then, in what probably should have been the actual announcement that Kingdom Hearts 3 had a release date, we got Kingdom Hearts 3 again. It was almost the exact same trailer as Microsoft and features characters and locations from the first two games. So, nothing terribly new there. Moving on, later that afternoon, we got a look at Ubisoft's conference, one that is known for typically being rather eccentric, and this one was not really any exception. They started off with a rather bizarre dance sequence that was supposed to be showcasing their new Just Dance game, although that's literally all it was, it was a bunch of random people dancing around on stage. The first actual gameplay announcement was Beyond Good and Evil 2. As many suspected, it is actually a prequel to the first game, which features a younger Jade from the original as an antagonist. It is supposedly able to be played either solo or co-op like a lot of games these days, and your time seems to be divided between fighting on the ground and fighting in space. And lastly, as part of the announcement, they brought out Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who talked a little bit about the Space Monkey program. They're supposed to allow people to collaborate to create different works of art, whether it's drawings, paintings, even music, which will then have the chance of being featured in the game. We got a Rainbow Six Siege documentary coming our way. The documentary will follow people that became professional Rainbow Six Siege esports players. We also got Trials Rising, a sequel to Trials Fusion, with a closed beta opening later this year, and the game slated to release February 2019 on all platforms. As sort of a recurring theme, we also got another look at another game, this time The Division 2, which showcased some more gameplay and we got another good look at some of the new tools and features in the game. There are new progression paths and specialization, especially for post-game players. There is the Sharpshooter, Demolitionist, and the Survivalist, which were showcased, and all three of these different classes feature different weapons and tools. They also announced that they will be bringing raids to the game as endgame content, and they already have three bouts of DLC planned with new areas and new story. Most people weren't sure how they felt about it until they announced that they would be releasing all of this content for free. We got more Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battles. Mm -hmm. we, we, mm -hmm. just, we just love those bunnies. We love those rabbits. We got to see more of the new Donkey Kong Adventure DLC coming June 26th. Donkey Kong and Old Man Rabbit are playable characters now. 
We also got our first gameplay look at Skull and Bones, a pirate game with a living open world. Every day is different, with some of them having benefits and some of them being really bad downfalls. Uh, running into the other players in the ocean definitely creates some conflict, though, as uh, any of the Sea of Thieves players would let you. We also got a first look at a brand new IP called Transference, which was a project that Ubisoft was working on together with SpectreVision, which was surprisingly headed by Elijah Wood. In this super psychedelic looking game, you actually enter others subconscious and try to piece together a mystery. It does look like sort of a thriller horror game, so that one will be really interesting to get our hands on. It is coming later this year, so keep your eyes out for it. We got more of a look at Starlink Battle for Atlas, the game that features actual toy ships with detachable parts that change your weapon loadout within the game. We got a release date for it, and it'll be coming October 16th, 2018. As well, they dropped that Star Fox will be a Nintendo Switch exclusive add-on to the game, where you can buy the model of Star Fox and his ship to be able to use in-game. We also got a trailer for For Honor. The starter edition is coming on Uplay for free from June 11th to the 18th. They also announced that their Marching Fire update is coming October 16th and will feature four new fighters from China. They also showcased a new 4v4 Castle Siege game mode, which seems really and in a very quick announcement, we also got word about The Crew 2. We got a quick look, and it's supposed to release on June 29th. The open beta starts on the 21st, and yes, that is this month. And to round it all out, we got to see more of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We got to find out that you get to play as two playable characters, Alexios or Cassandra, depending on how you want to play. They are descendants of legendary Greek heroes. You get to meet important people from that time period, as is with all Assassin's Creed games, and you'll be able to make decisions that will shape the way the story unfolds. It seems to have a similar progression system as Assassin's Creed Origins. Maybe almost a little too similar. Watching that, I felt like almost every aspect of it was like watching gameplay from Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, you would it still had that same feel with like Assassin's Creed 2 with Brotherhood and that kind of stuff where it did it did feel and play the same, but it still had its own appeal. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's it's kind of one of the fallbacks or one of I guess one of the downfalls of releasing a game every year mm -hmm. is you don't have that time to, you know, really work on new mechanics. You, you have mm -hmm. to recycle or or, right. you, or you release with, you know, Assassin's Creed Unity blocks. It was the same reason ah, uh, Unity those arms. and Syndicate those, seemed those almost exactly faces. the same too. So yeah, well it's, it's it's the same. It's, it's you don't have time to redo an entire engine. You just don't. No. If I'm honest, Ubisoft's showcase this year was a little bit disappointing. It was a lot of you know here's some extra content, here's some DLC we're releasing for this game. There wasn't a whole ton of of new stuff. We did get, you know, like Transcendence. There was mm -hmm. a couple new titles that nobody's heard of, but it wasn't anything huge. It was but like I mean, some new I mean, smaller IPs. Like in comparison, yes, but Ubisoft is still not the biggest in game companies like it's true. Say, Sony or Microsoft. Right, absolutely. They had so. fun. It felt like they were having fun. They, yeah. they are, and there's some things that I'm definitely going to pick up from them. For sure. They like are notorious Starbucks. for having almost a little too much fun to the point <laughs> of it being cringy, which. It still kind of was. Let's let's be honest, though. If you expect Ubisoft to be anything else, just just that whole beginning the camera transition with the woman's belly was weird. That, it was <laughs> weird. The whole initial dancing sequence was just. I mean, it was way overboard. I, I usually I, like the I, dancing sequences, I, I but get, this one felt weird. I get that you make just dance, but like. And what it, it did, it zoomed in on the lady's stomach, and I was like, and then whoa. It zoomed out. I literally and like, looked away. In a new I was place. like, where it is was this a transition. Going? I literally thought for a minute that I had ended up watching the wrong video because it was <laughs> it, like. <laughs> it's weird because it felt half assed, and they usually go all out on their uh, Just Dance titles, and I love that. I it love is the true. zaniness of their Just Dance title reveals, but this one was just. Sony closed this out on June 11th with The Last of Us Part 2. It showed off new cinematics and gameplay all featuring Ellie quite a few years into the future. Combat was very similar to the first game, but it feels far more intuitive and a bit less clunky. That being said, it was a trailer, and I'm sure it will change before the game is released. Oh, yeah. Don't get your hopes up too much. After an awkward sequence of moving literally everyone in the venue to a completely new venue and half an hour sequence. ranting for 30 minutes about random things, 
we finally came back in and got a more in-depth look at Call of Duty Black Ops 4. All it really was was an overhyped multiplayer thing where they showed off the fact that they would be bringing back some of the fan favorite maps from earlier Black Ops games. That was really about it. We also got some first time gameplay of Ghost of Tsutima. It takes place in feudal Japan during the Mongolian invasion. It features combat very similar to The Witcher with very, very low UI. We also got a look at Control, a super psychedelic action game that seems to let you control time and space, and it's coming sometime in 2019. And then, catching everyone a little bit off guard, they dropped a trailer for a Resident Evil 2 full remake. It is a full remake of the original game, and they have a release date coming January 25th of 2019. We got a funny look at Trover Saves the Universe, a game by Justin Roiland, a co-creator of Rick and Morty. It's a cartoony sci-fi platformer and will be an exclusive for the PS4. And because it's on PS4, we got even more Kingdom Hearts 3. The trailer was also pretty much the same, except we showed off a unique Pirates of the Caribbean world with ship battle. It shows even more of the characters from the previous games, and there will be a Kingdom Hearts 3 exclusive PS4 and collector's pack with all of the previous games on top of Kingdom Hearts 3. And then we got yet another one that everyone was looking forward to. We got gameplay footage of Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding. That being said, even though we did get about a solid 15 minutes worth of gameplay, we still have no freaking idea what is going on. <laughs> the gameplay showed a few different landscapes, some of them looking like an extraterrestrial desolate landscape, some of them actually looking like a futuristic dilapidated modern structure. So it is unknown really if it takes place on Earth or not. What we do know based off of the gameplay so far is that Norman Reedus seems to be going on some kind of journey and he gathers supplies along the way as he seems to get more and more as time goes on. We actually got to meet a few of the other characters that will be in the game and a little bit of a closer look at the invisible beasts. Apparently they have some kind of ability to alter time and we also know that the little flashing backpack lights help you see unseen beings. We got a trailer drop for Niho 2. The main protagonist can be seen turning into a demon of sorts, so that'll be fun. We also got more information on the Spider-Man game featuring Electro, the Rhino, the Scorpion, the Vulture, and an unseen villain, possibly the Green Goblin or Doc Ock. Combat seems extremely similar to Rocksteady's Batman series, but it's a superhero game, so did you really expect anything different? Apparently, according to a lot of my hardcore comic, fan, uh, comic friends, it's the Sinister, the Sinister Six storyline they're going for in this game. Oh. If, if you've got, yeah, you, we, we, we've got the four, and that's why Green Goblin and we Doc Ock are the them. two speculated. Oh, see, I don't know anything about that. That makes sense now. I'm dumb. Because that, that is the Sinister Six. Well, we got five people in the trailer. We did. We got Electro, the Rhino, the Scorpion, the Vulture, and, and then, then there was a Green Goblin and Doc Ock complete Sinister Six. Okay. So that's, that's, why, that's, why that's, why seven, that's why they're thinking it's... That's seven, though. No, Electro, they revealed Rhino, five, Scorpion, and, then we and got the Green Goblin and Doc Ock. Yeah, oh, you're right. There was one more, but I didn't. There was the weird Nego dude. The one that, that, that he's been in in earlier announcements and stuff. I don't remember. He's like a photo negative of himself. Um, Sony does have a really freaking good lineup right now. That I'm excited for like most of those games. Which, Spider Man, which is saying something. The Last of Us Two, Neo Two. I don't know if any of you played Neo, the first one, but that literally one was actually there's only one incredible. game on here. I'm not excited. Or I'm not like too too well. There's one game I'm not excited about, really, is Call of Duty Black Ops 4. But I think mean, it's 4. Call of Duty, so... I never played Niho, but otherwise, all the other ones, I'm like, Death Give Stranding me. looks Give incredible. Me. Please. Ghost of Tsushima, that looks so cool. That looks so rad. So rad. I, I'm, I really like those, like, hyper-realistic RPG-style games. I think mm -hmm. they're really cool. Like the uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance that came out a few months back. That was similar. Oh, yeah. It wasn't really fantasy at all. It was just, you know, medieval Europe... Mm -hmm. and you're just a normal guy fighting other normal guys. Mm -hmm. It's just cool. Yeah. It's really cool. So Sony's got a super cool lineup here. It it was kind of a weird presentation. I'm sure it would have been better if you were actually there. It was there. very weird. For the sake of the viewer, it just was awkward. It just seemed like an awkward presentation that was kind of all over the place. They went they went all out on The Last of Us 2 reveal trailer by building the church it takes yeah. place in in real life and right. revealing it in there and have a 15 minute segment before the trailer was released of a guy playing the banjo, yeah. which is the theme music of the game. And it was just like, okay, we get it. It's it's a good game, but it's a like- thing. It's happening. It's a little extra, I felt. That being said, 
they've got a lot ahead of them. Like this is mm-hmm. in, um, an amazing lineup. Like as far as so. as far as lineups come, Sony is definitely one. For sure, PC3. they've got oh, a very yeah. strong lineup. They got super strong lineup. And lastly, to wrap everything up, Nintendo had their showcase on the morning of June 12th. And like usual, they had plenty of goodies to keep the fans satisfied. They started off with uh, a new game that we've never seen before that was Damon X Machina. It was a very Gundam style trailer uh, that had big robots blowing up even bigger other things. And it's coming sometime in 2019, but that's literally all we know right now. We got a trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC, which will be only available through a season pass. As expected, we got more information on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. You can explore and battle simultaneously with friends. And we got a bit more information on the Pokeball Plus controller, which works like the Joy-Con. The entire game can actually be played with the Pokeball Plus controller, though that would probably be a little awkward. (laughs) You can also store Pokemon from the game inside and take them with you when you leave, much like we did with the Miis and the uh, Nintendo Wii controllers. Uh, Also, Mew is exclusive to the Pokeball. So, you want a Mew? Gotta get the Pokeball. Sorry. Hey, at least it's not hidden under a truck. We also got a first look at a new Mario Party game, the title of the game being Super Mario Party. The game allows you to put multiple Switch consoles together to customize a lot of the mini games that you'll be playing throughout the duration of the game. It is set to come out October 5th, 2018, and I'm sure they'll be showing us a few things here and there before it comes out. We got a brand new Fire Emblem trailer, Fire Emblem Three Houses. It'll be coming spring 2019. Hey, guess what, guys? You can play Fortnite on the Switch now, and it's free. But in better news, Overcooked 2. Ingredients can be thrown all over the place, and kitchens are subject to change on a whim. There are uh, local and online multiplayer modes. Hooray for Couch Co-op. Yes. And it's coming August 7th, 2018. We also got a look at a few indie titles that will be coming to the Switch. The first being Killer Queen Black. It is an indie multiplayer arcade game that allows for up to 4v4 players. In style, it seems fairly similar to Joust, the really old arcade game. At least that's what it looked like to me, and it should be coming later this year. Hollow Knight was also announced for the Switch. It is available in the eShop today, along with all of its DLCs. Love that game. And the bombshell everyone was waiting for, we got more information on Super Smash Bros. for the Switch. It is titled Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and it's bringing back every single character ever in a Super Smash game, even the DLC characters. Let's go over a couple of the new fighting styles. Mario has Cappy, Link is from Breath of the Wild, in 1v1 playing is Ryu, it will be played like a classic fighting game. Samus's power shot can now be charged in mid-air, there's faster sword play from all the Fire Emblem characters. Snake and Shadow Moses Island are back. You don't lose Pokemon when one dies as Pokemon Trainer. Captain Falcon has dramatic slow-mo effects in 1v1. They're amazing. There are new gauges added near character names for certain things. Shulk can immediately select Monado arts from the menu. Palutena's moves have all been streamlined. Thank you. Rob has a fuel gauge on his side. Tons of final smash moves have been reworked and several characters have just solidly been changed in their appearance. We also have new characters including Daisy, the Inkling uh, with Squid Sisters as a new assist trophy, and Ridley. It's a thing now, guys. Yes! It, it was one that I kind of anticipated. It's like we, we were all waiting for it in like all of the previous games. It just hadn't happened yet. Uh-huh. So happy. There's also new and returning assist trophies, Pokemon, items, and stages, and assist trophy characters can actually be KO'd now, so if you want to get rid of them, go up and punch them. All stages now also have a battlefield form on top of the Omega forms we saw introduced in Smash 4. A bunch of new smaller mechanics are being added as well, including fake Smash Balls. It is true. Run up, hit them, and they explode. If that horizontal line is thick, Get don't, do it. don't do it, just let it flow away. Uh, GameCube controllers, as expected, can be used in Ultimate. And lastly, we have a release date, December 7th, 2018. And that was it. Boom. That that was that was Nintendo's E3. I do want to add one thing to the uh, trophies being able to be KO'd. If you're playing timed, that counts towards your score. 
Oh, does it? It counts towards your no score. No way. It does. Like they zoomed oh. in on the score too, and he gets a plus one. So oh, if you're I didn't really bad that. at fighting your friends, let them get the trophies, and then you knock the trophies and, and out, and you can just win the game. <laughs> so you can just beat that, beat the snot out I of Waluigi. That. That's and amazing. Get a kill for it. <laughs> so if you're not good enough to take on your friends, you could at least take on the uh, you the could assist at least trophies take on there. Waluigi. So I, th I think Nintendo knew, kind of going into this, that Super Smash Brothers was going was to be their big the, release. The hype, mm -hmm. and that's they needed to spend as much time as possible on that. And I believe at the time of recording, the Treehouse is still going, and they're still playing Super Smash Brothers. I'm not surprised. Who wouldn't? I, I, if I was there, I'd probably play until they wouldn't let me play anymore. So it's, yeah, let's true. Be honest. It's very true. I want to play Ridley. I, I, how do you guys feel about the? Bringing back all the new characters, oh, oh sorry, all the old characters instead of introducing more new characters. It's not necessarily true. We still have, what, six months of Nintendo Directs well, where they announced a lot of their characters for the previous Smash games as well. At mm -hmm. the end of the showcase, um, the, the guy they got to do the announcement for Super Smash Brothers specific... Specific, the guy that made Super Smash Brothers. The guy that made Super Smash Brothers specifically said, because we brought back a lot of these old characters, I hope you guys don't expect to see a lot of new ones, is what however, he said. However, he we, up we with should still though. see more than the two that we have I now. really there, sincerely there's, hope there's, so. Solidly, there's going to be at least a, one more Treehouse announcing another character. Well, and he also, it, he he was, this guy is very honest too as a game developer and designer, and he talked about how every time you add someone new to the game, yes, you have to build mechanics for them, but then you have to add mechanics for Kirby and other players. So that's why he mainly was like, this is why I'm bringing old characters back and not brand new ones. We have those flushed out or like pretty much yeah, there. Yeah, we, we, know, we know the balance. We have to change the and that's already a huge a roster. It's, it's true. Giant. It is a huge. It's, it's a huge roster. Like it's gonna be insane like, regardless. There's there's mm. more people in Smash Brothers than Microsoft's games announced. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's going to be incredible regardless, and I'm still going to get it. Oh yeah. I just this this is honestly the reason I own a Switch is because I expected it to happen. I just want to see something ridiculous like Mr. Resetti or something. So as we're recording this, like we already said, Nintendo is still having their treehouse, so they are still actually going. And they're, they're honestly like, they like to hide things in the treehouse. Yeah, we just got information about Splatoon 2, so let's flip, flip, the, flip the video back on. The new Octo expansion has already launched by the time you are watching this, and it's the first paid DLC for Splatoon. Adds two new single player modes that feature 80 plus missions, new stories, and the ability to play as an Octoling for the first time ever. I'm also excited for Mario Party. Are ya? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, Mario <laughs> Party, it, it's so much worse than Monopoly at ruining friendships though. Let's oh, be honest. you have it's no so idea. <laughs> it's so fun though if you find the right people. It's you find so the right people fun. that don't just like what I shut down when you're there losing. What yeah. I enjoy doing, what I enjoy doing is just playing the mini games. Because when you're competing for stars, and the mini games look <laughs> rad in when, this one in my opinion. When, when you're competing for stars, you you're all enemies. Like you oh, all yeah. absolutely positively hate each oh, other yes. and you're willing to undermine and I, I, it is one of the few games I have openly raged and just quit <laughs> mid-game. <laughs> e even Dark Souls has not done that to me. Yo, Dark Souls did that to me like real quick. See, I may get frustrated, but I will take the time to get back to a bonfire so that I can save before I quit the game. Mario Party, on the other hand, <laughs> has pissed me off to the point that I just threw the controller, Remind me never turned off the system, and cards. left. Remind me never to hand Don't expect you. a Mario Party <laughs> Let's Play. Just, just don't. <laughs> not gonna happen. As much as I would I love worry that. too much for the camera's sake. Okay, but the we'll mini do games, one. I'm sure we'll do one. Let's, let's <laughs> <laughs> but to concentrate on the mini games, the part that you like about the game, yeah, it looks rad. In the it trailer, they so showed cool. two switches with half the map each, and depending on how you align the switches, depended on how the map worked. Yeah, so you could have them side by side. You could have them T. No you could have them a little way bit are like they this. Actually, like. They're actually doing it. Like, they're actually yeah. having fun with the fact that this console is literally a screen with two detachable controllers. I mean, and now- And that can do anything almost. Now we just need people to, you know, take two and three Switch consoles to the coffee shop or camping and we'll finally get that. But they I really just that. don't- 
they did that in the trailer. They showed. Oh, where, like, I know, I know. Went. I'm no, just saying. I don't. In real life, though. I'm just. No, I don't. I don't know many people that would actually take their Switch console to a coffee shop to meet up with their other friends who were at the coffee shop playing on their Switch console. I've seen it. Have you? I've s- maybe I've I'm just spl- uncultured. I've seen a Splatoon <laughs> two party once at a Starbucks. It was. Amazing Are you serious? To watch. Yes. See, that's the kind of stuff yeah. that I think is amazing. But I just don't. I don't think there's and enough. It's, of and it. it's something that only Nintendo could have. It ever is something that we need to promote. Table. All you out there, promote get a it. Switch and go out and play. Anyways, go and play. Who won E three? Oh. In my personal opinion, and I may be a little bit biased, but in my opinion, Bethesda took E three this year. Followed closely by Microsoft. Without bias, I think Microsoft. Even though Bethesda has a lot of games I really like, they Microsoft just came in like everyone was expecting nothing from them, and mm-hmm. they came in with a lot of great stuff. Just they did. They did a lot of great hits. They did have some faults, but that is to be expected with fifty games being right. talked about at once. And solidly, Microsoft won, in my opinion, because just the not not even necessarily the sheer number of games, but because of the sheer number of games, they definitely announced a lot of really good ones. So, like I said, I have to I have to say Microsoft won, right? But but that's Bethesda the, is definitely a close second yeah. because to me they share the God, I gotta, I gotta They share that first. I gotta I gotta love. Bethesda. You've got, well, you've I, gotta love I am absolutely a diehard Bethesda fan. I, I've been I've been with Bethesda since the Morrowind days. Since I was old enough to play games, I've been playing Bethesda games. So I, I may be a touch biased. That being said, I, I think between Bethesda and Microsoft, I think the, the two of them probably did the best this year. They crushed it. Uh, Nintendo definitely did to bring that hype factor. Yeah. That, not, that not no saying, one else really can bring. And I mean, that's also Nintendo. Like, they're not, they don't come in competing with other people. They're, not, they're just there. They're, they're their own thing off to yeah. the side. They don't, they don't get to be ranked because they're just Nintendo. I have said it before and I will say it again. I think this, in general, with all the announcements that we've had this year, this has probably been the best E3 conference that I personally have ever witnessed. This next year in gaming is going to be killer. It's going to be phenomenal. And uh, next yeah. January, February, March specifically. My wallet is not ready. <laughs> oh. What are you talking oh. about? Like, that's at the end of Christmas season. You'll have all the, like, gift cards you get from your aunts and uncles that don't know what you like. That's th- that's fair. That's probably true. Either way, it's going to be a good year in gaming, my friends. Anyways, we'll see you, geeks. Next week.